Hello and welcome to another Monkeys Motors video. As promised, today's video is going to be about what I do at work. Um, I am a biomedical scientist and I work in histopathology. So histopathology is just the study of diseased tissues and the department within the hospital is called laboratory medicine, also known as pathology. Um, what I'm going to be, the way I'm going to show you this presentation is I'm just recording my desktop of a PowerPoint that I made, that Emma and I made to give to school kids, kind of about our job. So, and I'm going to kind of pitch it at kind of GCSE-ish science level, so hopefully most of you understand. And I've also got this little red laser pointer thing on screen, so I can point at stuff. Anyway, on with the show. So um, this is our specimen reception. So in histology, we receive all kinds of specimens. It can be small, tiny diagnostic biopsies, which turn up in these little tiny orange lidded pots up to entire breasts, entire kidneys, whole, you know, a few feet of colon, all sorts, and they come in these larger white buckets. And they come in a solution that's called formalin. So formalin is a fixative and preservative. So if you put a bit of tissue in formalin, you know, a hundred years later, it's going to pretty much look exactly the same. So that's what's in these pots. Here's an example of one of those smaller pots with its attached form. Everything that comes into our department gets given its unique identifying number, a little 2D barcode, and a tissue code so we know what's going on. Um, this is a gas piece, and it's a gastric biopsy, a small piece of tissue from someone's stomach. The problem with formalin it is extremely toxic. I don't know if you've ever seen in movies where they're working with viruses in one of those fancy labs and something goes wrong and they've got like a little hole in the door that they can pump full of gas to kill all the deadly virus. What they pump in is formalin. So um, it's extremely toxic. But So all our work we do has to be done with adequate ventilation. So you can kind of see this table here. It's full of little holes and it's constantly sucking air downwards so that um, we don't get exposed to the formalin and die. Oh, and a warning. There will be some kind of gruesome pictures coming up. So if you don't like that kind of shit, this isn't really the video for you because it's, you know, there's bits of people. Ta-da! This is a gallbladder. You've all got one of these, unless you've had it chopped out, obviously. Um, the purpose of it is it stores bile, which is produced by the liver, um, until it's needed, and it, then it will squirt it into your small intestine, and it neutralizes the acids from your stomach, and also helps break down the fat in your food, and help, aids with digestion. So we, quite, we get quite a lot of gallbladders, um, because... As you can see, people get gallstones and they just block everything up and it causes problems. So they chop it out, send it to us. And the reason they send it to us is so we can just open it up and be like, yeah, there's gallstones. You know, on the very rare occasion, it's like, oh, no, it wasn't gallstones. It was full of tumour. You're poorly. But most of the time, it's just gallstones. This is an example of a squamous cell carcinoma. So this is a big old chunk of skin. It's been chopped off someone. There's the visible lesion on top. It didn't come painted. We paint it. Um, it will come with these sutures attached, some stitches, and on the form it will kind of say that these long stitches were lateral or medial and superior, inferior, short stitch, and then using that information we can ink the tissue so we know what's left, right, top, bottom when we're looking at it down the microscope. And this here is that same bit of skin once it's been sliced, kind of like a loaf of bread. We do call it bread slicing, so they'll just cut the tissue into slices, and then that's them laid out here, and then these can be sent on for further processing. This is an example of a large malignant melanoma, another skin lesion, so a big nasty mole. And as you can see here, these are the short sutures, long sutures. And in the form stated that yeah, superior was long sutures, medial short. And then you can see that they're going to ink it black and orange. And again, that's that same malignant melanoma once it's been bread sliced. Um, and you can kind of see, so formalin fixes the tissue and it doesn't look fresh anymore, if that kind of makes sense. But you can see where this tumour was so big that formalin hadn't penetrated to the centre, so that kind of looks a bit bloody and raw. You might think we see a lot of blood and kind of gore, but not really. Once the formalin's fixed the tissue, it kind of doesn't look as real anymore, um, which makes it a bit easier, I guess. A very small amount of pathology is to do with post-mortems, so dead people, but obviously a lot of the more interesting pathology comes from the dead people, because you can't take a brain out of a normal guy who's alive obviously. So we get the odd, it's extremely rare we get a brain, but I, we've seen a couple come through. Um, I've worked in histology for coming up to seven years now, so I've seen most of the specimens that we're ever going to see. 
brains being one of the coolest. This is an example of someone's a bit of someone's mandible, so a bit of their jaw, as you can see, teeth. Um, and all this dark area is actually a malignant melanoma. Um, so it's not just on your skin, you can get melanomas anywhere where there's a squamous epithelium, melanomas can end up. And obviously, well, they can metastasize anywhere. And again, you can see we ink the specimen to aid with knowing what the different margins. And then we've got a big old bone saw in one of our cut-up rooms. So it's kind of like the band saw you'd use at DT in school, but we use it for slicing up bits of people. Um, so again, the tissue's all been bread sliced, and then you can see all these slices laid out, even through down through the teeth. It's pretty cool, and you can see all this dark tissue here is the melanoma. It's quite a lot of cancer, hence why he's had half his jaw chopped off. This here is a section of large colon, so a bit of large bowel. So, you know, the tubes where your food goes through. So, um, these get opened up before being cut up, and so the formalin can penetrate the tissue and allow it to fix. And then this here shows that same bit of colon once it's been inked, and then again just bread sliced. So, you can kind of see this is the interior lumen, you can kind of see the mucosa on the inside and the surrounding fat. Oh, let's go back one. There's even little labels, so distal proximal. So this would have been the bit nearest the end, and this would have been a bit nearest the inside of the patient. And you can kind of see the lumen slowly gets bigger as it goes along. I'm talking bollocks, really. This is a um, was just one of the more gruesome pictures to show the school kids. It was a uh, adenocarcinoma in the kidney. So this is normal kidney tissue here, the medulla and the cortex. It's kind of this normal brown, light brown, and all this weird funky shit is the cancer. This shouldn't be it. This is all bad and necrotic tissue that happen. You know, you get big tumours, they keep growing and growing, and the inside has poor blood supply and ends up just dying, and it's nasty shit. So, what the doctors are doing while cutting up a specimen, they're selecting interesting pieces of tissue um, that will aid in diagnosis, such as, you know, a bit of the tumour, so we can find out what kind of cancer it is, and then bits of tissue from around the margin so they can assess whether or not it's spread and they'll put those pieces of tissue into these little plastic cassettes um, and we've got larger cassettes which we take less of things like prostate and breast get put into the larger cassettes and then all the other tissue goes into the little cassettes the majority of our tissue being tiny you know one to three millimeter biopsies or diagnostic is this cancer and then obviously the ones that are then we get the big old buckets um, and these get loaded into these metal racks as you can see here and these metal racks then get loaded onto our tissue processing machines. So histology is quite a slow process compared to the other, like, you know, hematology and microbiology, biochemistry, all within laboratory medicine. They're a lot faster turnarounds, you know, you kind of get your result in one to four hours. Histology, you're looking at a couple of days because it needs 24 hours to fix in formalin. And then processing takes anywhere between six and 16 hours. So it's an overnight process. And then you'll see the further stages we've got the tissue it takes a couple of days and these are our tissue processes this is what we stick those racks of blocks in so each retort can hold up to 300 of those little plastic sets and what these machines do so this is a little close-up of the screen they've got a series of different reagents and the whole purpose of these machines is to remove all the water from within inside the cells and replace it with paraffin wax so the best way I describe this if you imagine you've got a balloon full of water and you've got a knife and you try to take a little slice out of the middle of that balloon it's just going to pop and make a mess if you could somehow take all the water out of the balloon and replace it with wax hard solid set wax you could imagine you could take a slice out of the middle of that and you'll still have the rubber wrapped around the edge everything held in place so that's what these machines do and the basic way they do that first off the tissue is kept in formalin until the process starts because say you know i said some processes take six hours you know we come to work at eight in the morning so obviously it'll just sit in formalin until two in the morning and then the machine will kick in and start to go through the other reagents ignore my phone beeping in the background um, so it sits in formalin the next step is ethanol so just pure alcohol and that will draw out all the water just via osmosis um, alcohol and wax they don't mix I don't know if you ever dipped a candle in your vodka it just doesn't magically dissolve so we need to have a bridging agent between the two a chemical that mixes both with alcohol both with wax and that's that chemical called xylene it's nasty stuff. You spill it on your shoes, they dissolve. It's quite funny. Um, and that clears all the alcohol out of the tissue. 
and prepares it to be infiltrated with the hot molten wax. And then once that's done, you get your same blocks, cassettes, you take them out of the machine and they're little racks, and you're left with the tissue which has now been impregnated with wax. And this is an embedding center. So this is where we take the tissue out of the cassettes and we're going to place it in these metal molds. And so you can see here, there's some lined up. So the molten wax, this is all hot plate. Molten wax can be dispensed out of this tap here. And this is an ice tray. So once we've finished building the block and the mold, it gets set on the ice tray to cool down and harden. So here you can see this is a piece of lung um, being embedded into the mold. It's been taken out of the little cassette. You can just see the corner of it there, placed in this metal mold surrounded by wax. The wax starts to harden. We'll then put the cassette back on top because that's got all the patient information on. Fill it up with wax and leave it on the ice tray and then it'll set. And that takes us on to the next step. So these here are all the plastic cassettes with the tissue rather now being inside the cassette is underneath as the cassette was the top of the mold. Um, and sitting on an ice tray to keep it nice and cold, minus 10, keep it nice and hard. This thing here is called a microtome. So if you've ever been to a supermarket and you go to the butcher bit and you see the people like slicing up ham into thin slices, this is pretty much a very fancy machine for doing that. Whereas we slice it really thin. So I'm hoping you've all heard of a millimeter. The unit below that is called a micrometer. So in a millimeter, you've got a thousand micrometers. We cut sections at around two to four micrometers thick. So, you know, we could cut a millimetre thick bit of tissue into a 500 slices. So rather thin. They need to be thin because we're hoping to produce a slice of tissue thin enough that light can just pass straight through it. And you can look at it on a microscope. So the way they work is you set the thickness you want to cut at, 2 microns. You get your plastic cassette. You pop it in this metal chuck, holds it in nice and tight. Under this little red safety guard, there is a extremely sharp blade. As you turn this large handle here, the chuck comes down against that blade, slices off a section of tissue, and then as it comes back up, it will then come forwards towards you by two micrometers, and then you can go down again, cut another section, cut another section, cut another section. I know that was a shit description. Luckily, I have a video of it that I can show you. Let's just hide the red dot. So as you can see, plastic set held within the chuck, being handles being rotated, so blocks coming down against the blades, you're getting this thin ribbon of wax with the tissue in the center coming off. Luckily, you know, one section sticks to the next, sticks to the next, you get a nice long ribbon. We then take that and float it out on a heated water bar. So the, you, know, you see there's 47 degrees C, and that is slightly, it's not melting the wax, but it's just bringing it up near its melting point, which allows it to lay down nice and flat. So all this white stuff here, that's the tissue, and stuff around the edges of the wax. And then we pick that up on a glass slide and that's how you cut a section looks easy it's really fucking hard but you get the hang of it you then take those racks those racks you take those slides load them on the rack and it can be put on an automated stadium machine so every single slide every single slide that we cut ah oh, I've just like had a mental brain fart I'm gonna cut this bit out <coughs> So this is our automated staining machine. All the slides get loaded up onto racks and stained. Ah, oh, fucking hell, Dan. I can cut this out. I'll just cut to this slide and then cut the audio, it'll be fine. Whew. So this is our automated staining machine. Every piece of tissue that we receive will cut at least one block and produce one slide, which will then stain with a hematoxylin and eosin stain. And that is done by an automated machine, luckily, so we don't have to do it by hand anymore. Um, so we have all these different pots full of all different reagents, and it whizzes around and does it like magic. And then the final product you get is your tissue on a glass slide. So this is some needle cores of prostate, and then we check that against the block. I know it's a bit hard to see, but you can see this is the tissue within the wax still. You can see it matches the tissue that we can see on the slide. And then we match that up with a form and send it off to the doctor. We also have a very large selection of special stains that we can do, most of which are still done by hand um, to stain up all different kinds of things that the pathologist might be interested in. So first off, in the top left, we have the basic hematoxin and eosin stain. 
So we do this on literally everything and then the special stains as requested. So within this square here, what you're looking at is a bit of small bowel. Um, all the little purple dots, they're the cell nuclei and everything else is stained various shades of pink. So the cytoplasm, it's collagen, red blood cells, mucus. So all these cells under the pointer here, they're producing mucin. So keep everything flowing through your digestive system. If you jump over here, it's the same piece of tissue, same type of tissue, slightly higher magnification, but this has been stained by, we call it a PAS stain, it's the periodic acid shift stain. But what that does, it stains up all the mucins that are being produced, this nice bright pink colour. We still have the hematoxylin counter stain, which is showing up all the nuclei, a nice dark blue. And then you get all the mucins stained various shades of pink. We jump down here, this is a slight variant of the PAS, it's the Alcyon Blue PAS. So the PAS stains lots of things other than mucin, it also stains basement membranes, cell fungal cell walls, all sorts. Um, we use the Alcyon Blue to differentiate between the different types of mucins. And this one over here is just the Alcyon Blue on its own without the PAS. And then we just use a neutral red counter stain for the nuclei, which looks quite pretty, that's why I included it. This is a selection of different stains we can do for bugs. So in the top left, this is known as a modified Gimsa stain. I don't know if you've heard of Helicobacter pylori. Go away phone. It is a little spirochete bacteria that can give you stomach ulcers. So if you squint, you see all these tiny little dark blue dots that if you squint really, really hard, you can see they're actually spiral shaped. They are the Helicobacter pylori. This is all the um, mucosa lining of the stomach. If you jump over here, it's the exact same thing but with a different stain, wolf and styry stain. So all the little black dots now are the spirochetes. Jump down here, this is a Zeal Nielsen stain. So all these little pink rod shaped things, they're tuberculosis and all the blue dots. It's just a counter stain for the nuclei. If we jump down here, this is just loads of fungus. Again, stained with the PAS stain, it's staining up the cell walls. So you can see the hyphae and the spores. This is some more stains that we do. This is some liver stained for reticulin fibers. So they're the fibers that give the liver, it, liver its strength and structure. This here's a big old blood vessel stained with the elastic Van Giesen stain. So all these dark black and blue squiggly lines, that's the elastic. All this yellow crap in here is blood. You can see all the fiber and collagen around it. This is a methylen scarlet blue stain. And it shows up the fibrin and collagen, you've got the yellow red blood cells, you can kind of see their biconcave shape. And then again, this is just a stain which shows up hemosiderin within cells, which is kind of a breakdown product of hemoglobin, sepals, Prussian blue stain. So anyway, we've got lots of stains, lots of different things, for lots of silly names. But that's pretty much my job. Get the tissue, cut up the tissue, process the tissue, embed the tissue, sex on the tissue, stain the tissue. And then we give it to consultant doctors, and they're the ones that have the butchers down the microscope and say we're having noise cancer. <sighs> As you can tell, I hadn't practiced this, but a lot of people ask what I do as a day job, and that's it. It sounds more interesting than it is to do, but it's not too bad. Don't get paid much, but that's just the NHS. <sighs> so, if you've got any questions, please leave it in the comments below. I'll try to answer them as quickly and as accurately as I can. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.